Welcome to Inside Hawaii Real Estate, a show dedicated to providing up-to-date information news to Hawaii home buyers, sellers, and investors. I'm Will Tanaka with my co-host, co -host, business partner, and wife, Leone Lam, a realtor with over 20 years of experience in various leadership roles in the Hawaii real estate industry. Thanks, Will. Will is also now a full-time realtor with a background as a lawyer and the former head of a Hawaii title and escrow company. And we work together as a team to keep you informed about the latest happenings in Hawaii real estate. And we're so excited about today's topic because it is all about the important things that you should know about condominiums. And we've brought on attorney Jane Sugimura to help us out. <music> So Jane Sugimura, she's a real estate attorney with the law firm of Clay Iwamura, Polis and Nervell, and her expertise, or one of her expertise, is condo law. And not only is she an expert uh, in the law, but she also has practical everyday experience as a uh, condo association board member. Uh, in fact, she's a president, and she's really involved in the community as the first vice chair, first vice chair of the IEA Neighborhood Board and also the director of the AIA Community Association. So, I mean, she is really passionate about this today's topic. And just really grateful for you, Jane, and welcome to our show. Well, thank you for having me. I really welcome, enjoy, Jane. You know, yeah, I really enjoy being on your show. Ah, thank you so much. And, you know, regarding condominiums, there are actually 1,200, over 1,200 active condos for sale in the Hawaii real estate market, specifically here on Oahu. And, you know, when it comes to maintenance fees, because that is something that is on everyone's mind, how much are the maintenance fees? What are the maintenance fees? What do they include? So it's interesting because $900 is kind of the median cost for a monthly maintenance fee for a condo here in Hawaii, because 50% of all the condos have maintenance fees, $900 and less, and then 50%, the other half, have maintenance fees that are $900 or more. So kind of an interesting spread too, because there's actually condos on the market that have maintenance fees, monthly fees, as low as $100 a month. And then there's crazy one. There's actually a condo on the market right now with a maintenance fee of $10,396 a month. Wow. So anyway, maintenance fees for condos, you know, Jane, what is the purpose of maintenance fees for condos? And then do you have any insight as to why they vary so much from building to building? Okay, what maintenance fees are, well, you, you know, uh, condominiums are multifamily a building. In other words, you have uh, multiple families living in one building or one development. And uh, so the unit owner, and so so a condominium is a type of ownership where you own your own unit. If you're an apartment owner, you own your own unit and you hold in common with other apartment owners in your development, the common area. And the common areas would be like the hallways, the uh, elevators, the pool, the recreation area, the garage. Um, uh, anything that is not the apartment unit and you have common expenses because in order to maintain and care for this property you have to have management and you have and most condominiums have a managing agent like a Hawaiiana or a touchstone or a or um, uh, an associate they are the overall site manager who handles the day-to-day -day operation of the condominium and then you, I mean, then you have a, a property man, uh, what do you call it, a, a resident manager or a site manager who is in charge of the building and the grounds and, you know, dealing with owners and the concerns that they have with their units. And on top of that, you have insurance, condominiums. I mean, you have insurance for the building and for the grounds and for liability. You have, and a, a lot of condominiums have employees. Right, your security guard, your maintenance people, uh, your uh, your landscaping people, and if you don't have employees, you, you're outsourcing. Then you have contractors that get paid. So the people you see working around the uh, condominium, you know, during the day, those 
people all have to get paid. And how do you how do they pay for them? You you take um you, you add up all of the costs of all of these items, and then you 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 split them up. It's called pro rata. So if if you have one hundred dollars, let's say you know one hundred dollars for total maintenance fees, and you have ten units, and and so if if they were all equal units, apartments were all equal units, then each one would pay one tenth of the maintenance of the cost to do this, and those are the maintenance fees. But because you know you have like three hundred units, six hundred units, and sometimes you have one, two, and three bedrooms, the way they do that is you take the square footage of your unit over the square footage of the building and you will get a percentage and that always shows up in your ownership documents it's a percentage that is the amount that is uh, applied to the total uh, uh, budget and that is your maintenance fee for your unit so that one bedrooms will pay less than a two bedroom and a two bedroom will pay less than a three bedroom because the square footage right it, it varies Okay, so this is awesome information. And just to unpack that a little bit. So, you know, if, if uh, there's a lot of condo buyers right now on the market in the market right now, and on the um, on the ad, it'll say like, the maintenance fees will include water, sewer, common expenses. And I think you just talked about you just covered what the common expenses include, because I think most people don't really think about uh, paying the resident manager or the landscaper, the cleaners, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people think, okay, there's a gym, there's a pool. So, I mean, that that's uh, really insightful. And some buildings include even electricity sometimes. Uh, uh, yes, but, you know, m most buildings now they do submetering. So, you know, uh, in my building, uh, there's a little uh, um, circuit. They put it in each, you know, they put it in each unit. And so the there's one HECO bill that goes to the association and there's a, an act that reads it. So we get a, a, a bill. I get a bill just for my unit and that gets deducted along with my maintenance fees. So, so I pay two bills every month, my maintenance fees and my electricity. But I, what I do is I pay the association because the association gets one bill from HECO. And then, and then they recover the 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 rest of the um, the they they recover the the electricity from everybody who lives in my building, and so a lot of condos are like that. So you're you're, you're going to have um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, your maintenance fees and your electricity, and a lot of buildings have PV. Okay, so so that's one thing that a unit on uh, somebody who's looking, you know. To move into a condo would want to ask if they've got PV because that means your electricity is going to go down. I mean, because I think he, uh, right now Hico is charging thirty nine cent a kilowatt hour, and I know the the neighbor the neighboring condo down from us they've got the PV on the roof, and so their their rate is twenty four cents per kilowatt hour, right? And they've got sub meters, and so they they get a blended bill of maybe something like twenty seven or twenty eight, which is less than the eco rate but you know so 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 you know when you're looking uh you you want to find out it, because if there is no submetering and if you're a single person like me who lived in my building before they did submetering my electric bill when i figured it out was over a hundred dollars a month and i was never home right now with the submetering it's less than sixty dollars a month nice right so, so if, if you're, so, you know, that's one thing for somebody, you know, if they're, you know, moving in is finding out whether or not there is submetering in the building, because that will reduce their electricity, whether the building has got PV, which will also reduce their electricity. We're seeing rising maintenance fees for, you know, those few buildings that do include electricity within their maintenance fees because of the rising cost of energy. Mm -hmm. So kind of like what you're saying. And so it's like, you know, they're, they're seeing sometimes like 14% increases year over year because of the rising cost energy when electricity is included. That's a lot in of the, the reasons why you have condos doing the PV. You know, and and uh and that's even though the upfront cost is, you know, is is a bit much overall, I mean, it it results it results in, you know, lots of savings, you know, down the road. 
And the way you explained it, you know, regarding those kind of shared types of costs. So if the building was to install solar, the owners would then be responsible for paying for that cost of installation and they would have to split that up, right? Well, the way they the, the, the way they, they do it, you know, uh, uh, is you have an investor who comes in. See, because in order to install PV, there are federal and state tax credits. And uh, condominiums are nonprofit, so you can't, we don't, we can't take advantage of those tax credits. And so what happens is you have an investor who comes in and, and says, hey, guys, I'll put your solar on the roof and I'll fix up your garage and it's just so that they can hold the solar. And you then get into a power purchase agreement with me and I'm going to charge you less than he go. And but, you know, you don't pay anything for your solar. And and after a certain amount of time, I'll sell it to you, you know, after I make back my investment. And so usually the, the installation of solar for condominiums has been free. Not oh, free. It's, it's, oh, at, yeah. it's at no cost because you get a power purchase agreement where you agree to buy the electricity from the investor uh, for a period of usually it's 20 to 25 years. But mm -hmm. the buyback I, I'm hearing is between five to eight years. Power purchase agreement. That is a new term. Yeah, power uh, PPA, power PPA. purchase agreement. All right. But it's still cheaper than HECO, so it's a good deal. That is great to know. Thank you, Jane. And, you know, a lot of the, uh, one of the more common questions that our buyers may have is, do maintenance fees ever go down? Like, Never. ever? Never. Just like, you know, if you ask, I mean, do the price of groceries ever go down? I mean, you know, uh, maintenance fees are just like anything else. If if you have to go out and your groceries are more expensive or your gas is more expensive, guess what? Your maintenance fees are going up. And, you know, for people who are buying and if you get into a condominium and oh, one, one thing you ask why there's different uh, maintenance fees. That's because the size of the building determines what your maintenance fees are. If you're in a 100-unit building, it's a smaller building, less people, your maintenance fees will likely be smaller than a 600-unit building that's huge, that has all these amenities like a spa, a swimming pool, tennis court, you know, all these amenities that have to be maintained and cared for. And so, you know, that, you know, so, so that's why there's a variance. It depends on what kind of amenities there are. You know, because the amenities are not free. First of all, you, they have to be paid. You know, you pay to install them, and you got to maintain and care for them. Which means you have contractors coming around and taking care. You know, landscapers. Uh, you know, whatever, taking care of whatever amenities you have. And even with a tennis court, right? Every ten years or so, you've got to refinish the court. Even with uh, uh you know, even with a, a tennis thing, you have to replace the net basketballs you know the, the the basketball net does not stay you know functional for for years at a time so it all you know falls into maintenance fees and the things you're talking about like you know the basketball net or the tennis court net and things like that those are items i mean everything within the condo within the common elements and all of that the amenities etc they all have like a, a useful life right there's like a each each one has like a, the number of years that they are, you know, and then that's when the board of the condo would make decisions um, based on whatever the useful life is on when it's time to replace them or when it's time to look at making those maintenance upgrades or, or whatever is needed. And that's where it can get costly into special assessments sometimes. Well, no, that, you know, that, that brings up the subject of reserves. And I have to say, I forgot with maintenance fees, one component of maintenance fees is reserves. Okay, besides the the day to day uh, items like I mentioned, you know, your electric, your, your electricity, utilities, your uh, management staff, your employees. You have to set aside a certain amount of money by statute to pay for deferred maintenance. That means because you don't replace your roof every year, you, you know, and you don't paint your building every year and you don't, uh, you know, you don't replace your pool furniture every year or the, uh, the, the, the tennis net or the basketball court, right? So, right. so, so you have a schedule and, and um, the, the, the schedule is made by a 
an expert who does uh, uh, reserve studies, and in they're called components. Everything that you don't replace or repair on a on a, a annual basis gets put on a schedule, and 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 so you make an item and say, okay, how what's the useful life of this item, and what is the cost to replace it, and then there is a, a program. Once you put all this stuff in, and and you know like a a, a, a reserve list for a building, like I have a three hundred unit building, uh. Our reserve list might have 200 items on it, right? And so, mm -hmm. and then this program will spit out exactly how much you need to have, so that when that it comes time to replace something, there's money for it. And this, the reason why you want to do that is because when you don't plan for this, and all of a sudden you need to pay for replacement of pool furniture or the the pool you know malfunctions and you got to fix it or you have spalling and you got to you know address that and if you don't have the money set aside guess what you do a special assessment that's what a special assessment means that and by definition a special assessment is something you didn't plan for because if you had planned for it common sense says you would have socked money away and you know with with a, a lot of people who live in condos, they don't like the idea of, you know, why do I have to pay now for deferred maintenance that you might not need for three or four years from now, maybe five years from now, I may sell my unit and move away. But that's not fair, right? The fair thing is if you're gonna be living in a condo and it's a multifamily dwelling, it's your obligation to pay every pay something every month to be set aside in the reserve so that that money is there to address the items on the reserve study list that have to be repaired or replaced. And in a perfect world, and if you do it right, that means you will never have a special assessment. But what happens is, you know, pipes are supposed to last 75 years. We know now that's not true, right? We know that because we've had buildings that ended up leaking like a sieve and they sent in mechanical engineers and they said, guess what? Your pipes are failing. And you have your insurance company saying, you got to replace the pipes because we're not going to, we're going to walk away. We're the insurance company. We, we don't want to pay for any more water damage claims. I mean, you guys get, you can give us 10 water damage claims a day. We've had it. We're walking away. And so you got to replace the pipe. But guess what? Because pipes are supposed to last forever, Nobody had money in the reserves to pay to replace pipes. Mm -hmm. And what happened is the pipes, the, the cost to replace pipes, we find out, is something like $20 million. And so, you, you know, so, so people say, okay, well, what do we do? Well, you can go to a bank and try to borrow it. But that mm -hmm. means, you know, it means that your owners are going to have to pay, you know, for the loan. And uh, so for that, you do have to get owner's approval. A special assessment does not need owner's approval. Okay. A special assessment does not need owner's approval. The board can do it. And, but the board needs to have a reason. Otherwise, you know, they could get sued for breach of their fiduciary duty. So they're going to go out and hire engineers who go out and say, oh, yep, your, your pipes are failing. You got to replace them, and this is what it's going to cost. And so at that point, they can do a special assessment because it's a health and safety issue. The insurance companies told you, if you don't fix it, we're leaving, right? We're not, we're not going to insure your building anymore. This is ridiculous. I mean, we're not just... And so, 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 so you have to do a special assessment. And uh, so the board votes. And what it's special assessments is you find out what it is, and if it's $20 million, and you have... 500 units in your building and you take that you know the, the common interest i told you you take your mm -hmm. it's that the percentage the uh unit square footage over the building square footage you take that percentage against the 20 million and that's your share of special assessment and the board can pass it without owner approval but it has to be something that was not contemplated it has to be in other words they work on a budget every year and they start budget process between maybe August, September, 
about August and September, because you have to be able to give notice to owners 30 days prior to the increase. So that if you increase on January 1, that means you, if you're going to increase your maintenance fees, you got to know by December 1, which means that you got to do your budget, you know, before December 1. And, uh, you know, so, so if you don't, include in that budget replacement of pipe guess what happens when march comes and your structural engineer says guess what your pipes are failing your insurance company says we're out of here unless you guys you know do the work and so you go out and you get the bids and it comes back 20 million dollars and so the board then will have a town meeting invite the owners and i'll tell you you, you if you get 10 percent of the owners to show up even though you tell them, please come to the meeting, you got to come, you got to come because we got something really important to tell you. And then when they special assessment hit, then you have owners saying, we've been blindsided, this is not fair, right. it's crooked, this is, you know, and it's like, excuse me, you know, this is, you know, you need to be involved in the process. Your board members, right. board owners have to be involved in the process. You can't blame the board. They're making, they're making the hard decision I mean, because look at what happened in Florida. You had a board that, 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 and in Florida, uh, the board did not have the um, uh, authority to do special assessments and to move forward. So they had to have owner's approval to do the spalling work that had, that had to be done. In Hawaii, you don't. If the board determines you're gonna do spalling repairs and it's gonna cost a million dollars, they can go ahead and, and do it. And, and you're going to have a lot of owners screaming at them, why are you doing this? But now we know because we don't want the building to collapse like it did in Florida. Is and that because the laws differ between Hawaii and Florida? Is that like so that, you know, in Hawaii, that the board is able to make the decision for health and safety reasons? But it's like in it's Florida, the way that, you know, it's the way the, 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 the laws have developed it in Hawaii. The condo laws, the big thing is self-governance. And so the legislature really does not and we've asked them not to get involved uh, mm -hmm. on a you know micromanaged condos. So we, so they say condos are like little governments. That's true, right? You have a board that makes decisions there, and the board is selected by the owners of the building. So it is like a little mini government. But you and know, the board is the board are volunteers. The board the are volunteers. They are paid board. volunteers. And let me tell you. Uh, it, it's a thankless job, and you know I've been on the <laughs> board for many, many years. We spend hours, my, me and my board members, we spend hours reading, you know, materials, and if it, it has to do with uh, building repairs, like one, one of the jobs we had maybe uh, several years ago was moving all of our pipes from under the building because they were leaking so bad, and to move them up to the first and second floors, and that was a huge job. You know, and so it took a lot of hours. We're meeting with you know engineers and uh, other experts, and 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 being and they were explained because we're all lay people. We're all lay people, just you know, and so they had to explain to us what they were doing, and you know, show us drawings and 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 answer a lot of questions because we're talking about a job that was you know several millions of dollars, but it, it was the health and safety of the building. Like I said. When you're when you're a condominium, you don't have a choice. If you're told that there's something bad that you know wrong with the building, you have to take action. Otherwise, right. you're exposed. You, you, the board member, are exposed to personal liability for failure to you know to uh, uh, comply with your fiduciary duty, which is to act for the benefit of the association. So if you know that you've got falling, I mean. Even if you don't want to spend the money, you have to spend the money. So, Jane, you know, in terms of um, the board members' roles and the maintenance fees. So, I mean, typically, I've seen uh, very common maintenance fee increases of maybe three percent to five percent. Um, you, you know, over time on an annual basis. One, once in a while, you'll see a jump of fifteen percent. And in one, I don't want to name the condo in Kakaako, but I think they jump forty, close to fifty percent over a span of a couple of years, and, and there was a huge outreach. Uh, maybe, maybe that were, were well, all For these... one thing, you know, three to 5% doesn't even cover inflation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for those buildings, they, that was, they were underfunding their building. And you got to remember, 
the budget includes operating expenses, which is what it takes to keep the lights on and the water running, and reserves for mm. the deferred maintenance, okay, the a little extra. And 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 I tell owners, look at your reserves. And if you don't have three to five million dollars in your reserves, I would be really worried because you know, to do to do uh, you know, spalling, you need at least a million dollars. You know, so you know, so you know, people think, oh, these condos are rich. They got two million dollars in their reserves. Hey, you do, you know, one spalling, one paint building paint job, the two million is gone. You get mm -hmm. hit by, you know, a hurricane, and you know, you've got, you know, millions of dollars of damage. I mean, so that that two million dollars in reserves doesn't look so big, but it takes a long time to build up those reserves, and it's important to have healthy reserves. Otherwise, you have a situation where you have special assessments because you don't have the money to do the repair that has to be done. So, so in terms of percentage, what would be a healthy, reasonable increase per year, would you say? For older buildings, I right. I would say it would be uh, four to five percent over inflation. So if, if we're doing eight percent now, then maybe 12 to 13, 14 percent, that would cover your reserves. And, you know, right now uh, we have uh, the in insurance uh, market, you know, because of reinsurance, because of everything that's happening all over the world, fire, you know, wildfires in California, the condo collapse in Florida, you have tornadoes, you have floods, the reinsurance market has suffered all these losses. And so now they're surcharging, not only Hawaii residents, but people on the mainland. Our insurance went up 35,000 last year, uh, uh, 2022 and 2023 went at 65,000. That's more than the 12%. See, so already we're behind the eight ball, right? We're, we're, and so, you know, people have to understand that, you know, they got to look around and if things, if prices are rising, you know, for the stuff that they buy every day, guess what? Your maintenance fees are not immune to that. The, you know, your maintenance fees are going to include the increases in energy costs and the inflation. And so when you're talking about three to 5%, you're underfunding. You're, you know, so, so at some point, you're gonna reach a point where somebody says, hey, there's not enough money. And if we have to do a spa repair, we're gonna have to do a special assessment. So now we have to build up our reserves. And so now we're gonna do a 22% increase to catch up. That's what's happening. So if you have that, that means that you were underfunded and the three to 5%, I mean, if, if that's what was happening every year, I mean, if you're a board member, you know, who, who wants to stay, you know, uh, be on good terms with your neighbors, yeah, three to 5% a year is good because that way they're not mad at you. I mean, if you were to say 10 to 12%, they might not, they may stop speaking to you, but that's not your fault. You know, you're the one, you, you're the one who sits on the board, you get all the numbers and you say, hey, this is what we need to make sure that the lights go on and the water runs. I mean, this you know, is it's so funny as number. we're talking about these percentages of increases and everything, like it somehow is calming me about the increases in private school tuition. <laughs> like, because when you're bringing up all these different aspects regarding the condos, it yeah. kind of just reminds me about private school tuition and inflation and the cost of operating and everything like that. So I won't be as upset anymore. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we, so people, people, people have to understand that board members are, you know, they're called on all the time. Whenever we make these decisions, and especially with an older building, with yeah. an older building, I mean, it, it, it's expensive. It's expensive because by now everything's falling apart. And now you got to do spall. You've got to replace your pipes. You know, you've got to replace the roof. You've got to do the painting. And you know, and and so you know, it's an and it's not cheap. It's not right. cheap. And you know, so. You know what I want. What I want to tell your um, listeners: if you are a condo owner, be kind to your board of directors because let me tell you, they have a thankless job, and most of them put in lots and lots of hours to make sure that their building is is the safe place for everybody to live in, and and at least you know uh, reasonable to, and marketable. That's one of the things that a board is charged with to make sure that their property uh, is is safe, healthy, and marketable. 
and 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 for okay. that you know, and you know, they, they they need to they need to you know have the money uh to spend to do that yeah and, and jay we love your passion we love your expertise and we love your like everyday real world condo member association experience and this was another awesome um think tech show we really appreciate you super grateful and thank you so very much jane okay well thank you, you for having me i'm always glad to be on your show thank you thank you jane hey Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.